Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Two fires overnight damaging two different homes just ahead. What local firefighters are saying this morning about the people who were home at the time. Plus, the banking crisis, it continues with what new audio is revealing this morning about what's being called the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, some of our neighbors seeing snow yesterday in the middle of March. What will the rest of the weekend, what does your work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. For now, good morning. It is morning. 6 o'clock this Sunday. It is March 19th. So, Sarah... How's the garden looking? I know yesterday it threw everyone through a loop. Oh, okay, but you know, I didn't get any snow at my well, house. Well, yeah, <laughs> knock on wood, we know that. No, and I, it, it just got a lot of rain, and yep. I, I was out of town, and I came back, and I was like, oh, it looks beautiful. Nice and yeah, it's just a little hydrated. Cool. I, you know the way I like to think about it. You know when you go to the florist, Max, and uh, <laughs> and you put those flowers in the fridge and preserve them. You know this is kind of like we're in a little bit of a fridge, but we're right. not freezing. It's not damaging any of our gardens. In fact, we got some good rain yesterday in many places. Today and tomorrow, not so much in the rain department, but we are going to be cloudy and cool. So the cool weather lasting for a couple of more days here before we see a bit of a warm up outside. Right Right now it's 43 degrees. You're definitely going to want that coat, the jacket. Uh, temperatures though in the hill country in the upper 30s, 37 in Rock Springs and 39 in Kerrville, 44 in Del Rio, 45 in Gonzales, 45 the wake up temperature in New Braunfels. Most of this rain is going to stay south of San Antonio today. So if you live in Catula, Beeville, you're getting some rainfall, uh, but around San Antonio it's likely going to stay pretty dry. Here's your Sunday forecast. Cloudy and pretty much through the early afternoon. We may see a few peaks of sunshine right around 56 for the high. So a cool day, cooler than average by some 20 degrees. Those north winds will turn to the southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. We'll have one more cool day tomorrow and then we start a warming trend. We'll be back into the 80s by Wednesday and Thursday. Coming up though, we're going to talk about our rain chances in the week ahead and when we could next see some storms. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, one home destroyed another, dealing with a lot of damage after an overnight fire on the city's northeast side. Alyssa Cole is joining us live from where it happened on okay. Ashland Drive near I-35. So, Alyssa, did anyone get hurt? Yes, uh, Sarah, Max, no one was hurt. But before we get into that, I do want to show you this. That fire was very strong. You can see this pot outside of the home is totally melted. And before we show you the video, take a look. It's a total loss like you all described. But to answer your question, Sarah, fire officials tell us luckily no one was hurt during this incident, but two people were inside the home during the fire and they were able to get out safely. We'll probably show you some of the video right now on your screen. Take a look. San Antonio firefighters tell us a little after 11 o'clock last night, firefighters arrived here on Ashland Street to a very heavy fire pouring out of this home. It was so heavy, San Antonio police came to assist keeping people away from the area while, while crews worked to put out the flames. Now, at some point, the fire reached the house next door and it melted the siding of the home and the damage is pretty extensive, but eventually they were able to put out the fire to save the other home from further damage and from burning down. The original home that we showed you just a few moments ago, like we mentioned, it is a total loss. Right now, investigators, they are working to find out exactly how this fire started and what caused it. Reporting live on the Northeast side, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Alyssa, thank you. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are hoping a photo of a suspected kidnapper's vehicle on your screen right now will lead to their arrest. The attempted kidnapping happened Friday in the 5800 block of Wales Avenue. That's near Pecan Valley Drive and East South Cross. Police say the suspect, who is believed to be between the ages of 17 and 21, tried to force a 27 year old woman into the back seat of this maroon Nissan Murano. The woman was able to fight back and was able to get to a neighbor for help. Anyone with information on this attempted kidnapping or on the suspect is asked to call that number on your screen. That's a Crime Stoppers number 210-224-STOP. Well, this morning, more problems for the banking industry. New audio of the failed Silicon Valley Bank's now former CEO appearing to be optimistic about the business outlook and optimistic about future projections. As ABC's Chuck Severston says, it happened just days before the bank collapsed. 
In audio newly obtained by ABC News, the then CEO of now failed Silicon Valley Bank appearing to project confidence in the company's outlook at a conference on March 7th, just three days before the bank's failure. If you think about the Fed, um, what they want to do is making sure they're, they're kind of managing kind of all, all financial risk, mm-hmm. right? And so much of that risk has gone outside of the banking sector. According to government financial filings, Becker sold $3.6 million in Silicon Valley Bank stock late last month, the bank's parent company filing for bankruptcy on Friday. Becker's lawyer telling ABC News, we believe Mr. Becker conducted himself appropriately at all times. Sources telling ABC News the Justice Department and the FBI are investigating the bank's collapse, allegedly focusing on possible insider trading. Did the sale occur before a large stock price decline? And I think the answer here is yes, it did. Now the question will be, well, did the executive know something at the time? First Republic Bank just got a $30 billion lifeline from 11 of America's biggest lenders. And public filings show the executive chairman of First Republic, Jim Herbert, sold more than $4 million in bank stock in January and February of this year. A spokesperson for Herbert telling ABC News the sales were part of estate planning and charitable donations. Also, another struggling bank, Credit Suisse, is reportedly in talks to merge with UBS. Just last week, Swiss authorities pumped $50 billion in cash into Credit Suisse. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. And staying in morning headlines, former President Donald Trump says in a social media post he expects to be arrested on Tuesday, and he's also calling on supporters to protest. A New York grand jury investigating hush money payments to women who allege sexual encounters with the former president. Right now, no evidence that prosecutors have made any formal outreach to Trump or his team. The district attorney's office in New York has declined to comment. A strong earthquake that shook southern Ecuador and northern Peru has killed at least 15 people and left others trapped under the rubble. Saturday's earthquake with about 6.8 magnitude also brought down homes and buildings. But in Ecuador, regardless of geography, many of those homes had a lot in common. They housed the poor, were old, and did not meet building standards in the earthquake-prone country. The government has offered to pay for the funerals of at least three people. And for all you Longhorn fans out there, I'm sure you're waking up with a smile on your face. University of Texas advancing to its first Sweet 16 in 15 years. This one hurts a little bit. 71-66 victory over Penn State in the second round of the NCAA tournament. So the second-seeded Longhorns making just one of 13 shots from three-point land. It was enough to get the W. Texas will play either Pittsburgh or Xavier. Whoever wins on Friday in the Midwest region semifinals. The University of Houston also advancing to the Sweet 16. And I'm going to just give University of Houston a lot of credit on this one, too, because they just demolished in their victory last night. Nice. Yeah, so. I'm sorry Penn State lost. Man. Thank, thank you. Know I'm what? sorry. I appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, my only gripe was these games are too late for us. Oh. Like the Penn State, yeah. Texas A&M game, halftime didn't even go until 10.20 p.m. Halftime. You're sounding a little old, Max. The game went to like midnight. <laughs> this is really, regardless, they're not even West Coast teams. Time now, 608, 43 degrees out. Taking a look outside with live cam. Yeah, I like the, the fridge analysis that Sarah Spivey, 43 degrees. She's going to let us know what our week is going to look like when we come back. Good morning. Welcome back. So I have to ask, did you guys coordinate? I guess no. we did. This is perfect. I guess we did. Also, I want to kind of peel back the curtain here a little mm-hmm. behind the scenes. Sarah's standing on a box. Okay. <laughs> okay. Isn't that great? <laughs> don't, don't give the people my secret, Sarah. I had to. Well, I know. <laughs> when you're, you know. <laughs> Yeah. A very, a very short on, gal. So I'm short like that. Okay. It is always funny when I meet people outside of the station. They're like, oh, you look so much taller on TV. It's like, one, not a compliment. <laughs> Two, I thank you guys for that. Well, it's because we are short. It's yeah. a team effort here. Short queens. Hey, there short we go. Queen. Okay, but let's talk a little bit about the weather. That is why I'm here after all. <laughs> uh, we are cloudy outside right now. And, you know, these clouds are going to be with us through today and through tomorrow. I do think we are going to have a few peaks of sunshine this afternoon. And if you're worried about rain today for your Sunday plans. It's looking less and less likely that we're going to see much, if any, rain at all today. It's 43 degrees, west-northwest winds at 5 miles per hour.
hour. It is cold up in the hill country, though. Temperatures are in the 30s, 37 in Rock Springs and 43, uh, pardon me, 39 in Kerrville. It's 44 in Del Rio, 41 in Eagle Pass, 45 in Pleasanton, 45 in New Braunfels. Neighborhood views here, it's 41 in Rio Medina. Good morning in Bandera, it's 39 degrees there, 44 in Seguin, 45 at Simpson. Notice we're all above freezing, not concerned about a freeze. And as far as rain goes, I do want to show you the radar here. I will go ahead and zoom out a little bit more. There's some very light rain across areas near Catula, Beeville, Corpus Christi, Victoria. This is really where the rain is going to stay today. And again, it's pretty light. In fact, we can go ahead and turn on the radar that's closer. So Catula, Webb County, Beeville, Corpus Christi, Kingsville, all getting some very light rainfall. But as you can see around San Antonio, it is fairly quiet. Let me take you through the future cast. Even this uh, is overdoing it. You can see that it's showing the future cast a little bit too much rain, not enough. Uh, there, that is really overdoing it. And as we look ahead to the day, it keeps all the rain out of San Antonio and well to the south. So 0% chance for rain after about 10 o'clock. And then as we head into the afternoon, a few peaks of sunshine. Some of us are going to see sun for the first time in a couple of days today, which is a welcome change. So as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, you'll need the jacket pretty much with you all day, but just a lighter jacket in the afternoon. 41 degrees around 8. 46 at 10. It'll be near 50 degrees around noon and then in the afternoon we'll be looking at about 56 for the high and again a few peaks of sunshine this afternoon. Winds are going to turn from the north today to the south. They'll be pretty light though at only about 5 to 10 miles per hour. High temperatures in neighborhoods a little bit cooler out west where the cloud cover is going to stick around a bit more. So Del Rio you'll only be at 51 today. Catula at 52. Meanwhile about 5 degrees warmer here around San Antonio, nearer to 60 degrees out near Canyon Lake, New Braunfels and Seguin. It'll be 56 in Bernie, 57 in Kerrville, 57 in Hondo and 59 in Divine. Let me take you through the forecast for tomorrow for back to school. We're going to be looking at some cloudy skies throughout the day. No peaks of sunshine tomorrow and very little to no chance for rain, except for in the evening when drizzle works its way back into the forecast tomorrow night. And that's because a warm front is actually going to move through increasing the humidity. It's going to be humid Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday every day. Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday there will be morning fog and drizzle because that humidity will be back and we'll finally be warming up by uh, Wednesday. We'll be back into the 80s, 82 degrees on Thursday. Max and Sarah Thursday and Friday, Thursday into Friday night looks to be our next chance for storms coming up in the next half hour. I'm going to detail that storm chance a little bit more for us, uh, but again, swings back to the warm uh, spring like weather by Wednesday. OK, I, there's no 90s on that. There is so. no 90s, although it is going to be humid. So. OK, thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. 615, 43 degrees out. All right, the Brahma is back in action at the Dome and it is military appreciation night. Up next, we hear from a San Antonio defensive back, also a Navy alum about what tonight means to him. Still your starting quarterback? Uh, no. We will go with uh, Reed. Uh, and to start the game off, both quarterbacks will play. All right, so there you have it. Reed getting his chance to lead the Brahma's offense under center tomorrow night in Big Port Sports. So head coach Hines Ward led the Brahma's back to the Dome this weekend for the first time in nearly a month. Last time they took the field was in mid-February for their season opener against the St. Louis Battlehawks, they lost that game 18-15. Now the team returns to San Antonio on the wrong end of a two-game losing streak. They only scored a total of 19 points. So in four games this season, former starting quarterback Jack Cohn completed 58% of his passes, only 625 yards, five touchdowns, two interceptions. Now it's time to see what Reed can do under center for the team that is clearly still trying to figure out how to finish drives in the end zone. We'll make some changes. Uh, hopefully, they're for the better. And I think, you know, offensively and uh, defensively, and our special teams have been playing well. We just have to match everyone else offensively, and hopefully, we can turn uh, um, some playmaking abilities from our players and the scheme that we're running uh, and translate that into W's. 
All about the W's. So after the walkthroughs yesterday, the Brahmas signing autographs on hats, footballs, and cards for the wounded warriors, all part of Military Appreciation Night. So here's the fun fact. San Antonio defensive back Sean Williams, he's a Navy alum. So obviously tonight has special importance. It really means everything. Um, I hope everyone that we have here really can grasp in the moment, you know, those times where we try to celebrate those people that go out on the front lines and really hold it down for our country. And also the people supporting those people in the background, you know, and the sacrifices that they have to make in order to, you know, enjoy days like this and games like this. So if you aren't too wrapped up in March Madness, the Brahmas facing the Arlington Renegades tonight. Remember, kickoff has been moved up to 8 p.m. Go Spurs, go. After losing to the Memphis Grizzlies Friday night in that ridiculous comeback win from the Grizzlies or comeback loss from the Spurs, whichever way you want to talk about it, Spurs back in action today. The Atlanta Hawks in town, and of course, that means a familiar face, a reunion with the team's former star, DeJounte Murray. Game will tip off this afternoon, AT&T Center, starting at 3 p.m. And at last check, I know everyone's a little concerned. We had like a weird winning streak there. Don't worry. We're, well, still... we're concerned about winning. Yes. We don't want to win. <laughs> we're still a bottom three team. Because we so... want those top picks. Right. Right. Uh, actually, there was a mural of Victor Wembayana put up around San Antonio. Oh. I know. Uh, some were saying premature because you never really know. Yeah. But come on down, Victor. Just we saying. might win the rest of the, our games or the season, right? Exactly. Yeah, sure. <laughs> exactly. Time now, 622, 43 degrees out. Okay, recent bank failures might have you wondering if you should do something different with your money. Up next, what a financial specialist says the key is to keeping it safe. Good morning and welcome back. So it's uh, really the story of the last couple of weeks, banking turmoil around the country and obviously stirring up a little anxiety. One banking expert tells 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore it's the best move is to be sure your hard earned money is insured. So your life savings is in the bank and recent bank failures have you wondering what if? Is their money safe in the bank? How do you respond to that? First of all, keep calm. Bank rate analyst Matthew Goldberg says the key to confidence is four letters, FDIC, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. This is a time to check your FDIC insurance coverage to make sure, A, you're an FDIC insured bank. Most banks are, but to be sure, you can ask them or use the bank find tool on the FDIC website. And the second thing is you want to make sure you're not over the insurance limit. If you have less than $250,000 in individual accounts, you'd get every dollar back. For joint accounts, it's a half million dollars. On the FDIC website, there's an estimator tool called ED to check your total coverage. Credit unions have similar protections, but from the National Credit Union Administration. But what if you have money over the cap? One option, spread your wealth and open another account in a different FDIC insured bank. We're in this rising rate environment in the last year. Maybe get a high yield savings account at a FDIC insured online bank. Finally, there's always the mattress for savings, but financial experts don't recommend it. And that's why the FDIC insurance exists, because they, they don't want you to do that. They want you to have faith in the in the system, in the banking system. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 627, 43 degrees out. A big recall on some baby formula just ahead. We're telling you why one company, which makes Gerber's Good Start Infant Formula, is voluntarily recalling its product. And hundreds gathering to remember a beloved Uvalde teacher. Up next, how organizers hope to keep her memory alive in the years ahead. Morning, welcome back and happy Sunday, 6.30 this morning. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. So yesterday, you had a little family gathering. Yeah, I was in Austin for the last couple of days seeing my 92-year-old grandmother. She's doing all right? She's doing great. Good. And all the family was there. And it was really nice, but it was, it was chilly outside yeah. in Austin. Did you guys see snow in Austin? No. You missed out. No snow. It was like... You you should have seen me yesterday, Sarah, <laughs> with the snow in the hill country on March 18th. We got great pictures, though. We really did. You know what? 
just for fun, I'm going to show a couple of those coming up in the next uh, 30 minutes or so. Love it. But no snow today. No snow. In fact, no real rain in San Antonio either. It is cold, however. It's 39 in Kerrville, 39 in Comfort, 43 in San Antonio, 44 in Seguin, 45 at Stinson. Now, today we are going to be cloudy. A stray sprinkle is possible this morning, but unlikely. Only a 10% chance there. We'll be warming up to about 51 by noon and hopefully a few peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. Afternoon. That would be great to see a little bit of sun. Looks like we'll be forecasting right around 56 for the high today. Now coming up in the weather, we're going to talk about a few things. Here's your weekly weather timeline. Today and tomorrow, it's going to be mainly dry but cool and cloudy. I've got your bus stop forecast for tomorrow as kids head back to school. Midweek, it will become humid and we'll be back to the warmth. In fact, I expect daily drizzle after about Monday. So from Tuesday onward, dra daily drizzle in the morning. And then late in the week, we do have a chance for storms on Thursday night. So a bit of a mixed bag in the weather. We'll be talking about this and I'll have a picture or two of yesterday's snow coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, fire crews working throughout the night, putting out another fire in San Antonio. This one on the southeast side. It happened on Caton near New Braunfels and I-10. That's where we find Alyssa Cole. Now, Alyssa, um, is arson going to be out there investigating? Well, you know, Sarah, it is a possibility because we learned from prior crews that arson investigation was called out to this location to do their job to exactly find out how this fire got started. Before we show you video, let's show you what it looks like now. We're going to pan our camera and zoom in and show you exactly what state that this home is in. Here's what we know, and we're going to roll some video so we can show you how that looked last night. Our, firefighter, our firefighters arrived to the neighborhood a little after 1130 last night. The fire had pretty much spread throughout the home and it was so aggressive. It was in a very aggressive state. The flames were just pouring out of the home and there was heavy smoke as well. The front of the house was completely gutted by the intensity of the heat and the biggest challenge crews encountered was containing the fire to this house in effort, of course, to keep the surrounding homes in this neighborhood safe. Now, they were able to overcome that challenge for the most part, but one home next door did receive some damage to the siding but it's not as intense as that last home that we saw just about 30 minutes ago. Now, unfortunately, this home that we just showed you a few moments ago, it was a total loss. So the people living here, they did lose a home. But the good news is the one person that was inside, they were able to get out safely and no one was injured. Reporting live on the southeast side, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. The day after what would have been her 45th birthday. Hundreds gathered in Uvalde yesterday for Eva Mirelis' memorial run. The brave teacher died at Robb Elementary almost nine months ago. Over 400 people signed up to run in person and virtually. The money raised will go towards a scholarship organizers hope to make this run an annual event. On top of raising money for a scholarship, they're hoping to get enough to buy school supplies and toys for children. Well, the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office still working to determine the identity of a 12-year-old girl, 12 years old, who was shot and killed at a house party on the city's west side. San Antonio police responding to this scene just after 2.30 yesterday on South Callahan Road, not too far from Old Highway 90 and Highway 151. Officers found the 12-year-old as well as a 15-year-old with gunshot wounds. Police say the party had both teens and adults participating. No suspect found on the scene, no one in custody yet. That 15 year old still in the hospital. The Bulverde Spring Branch community is working together to help the families of two businesses forced to close due to a fire. The fire happened on Saturday morning at the Makery in Old Village, downtown Bulverde. Fire officials would not comment on the investigation into the fire. Now the Bulverde Spring Branch Chapter of Commerce is collecting donations to help the more than a dozen people who work at the art studio in Verde Bistro, which was also damaged. We've even had a restaurant owner reach out to offer employing some of the other uh, some of the staff members here until Verde can get back up and running and in business again. The owner of the makery says they lost a cat in the fire. She estimates there was more than $100,000 worth of specialty equipment in her studio. All right, in your morning headlines, in a social media post, former President Donald Trump says 
He expects to be arrested this coming Tuesday, and he's now urging his supporters to protest. As ABC's Jay O'Brien reports, Trump says the charges will come from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office over alleged hush money payments. Former President Trump claiming he expects to be arrested on Tuesday and telling his followers to protest. In a post on his social media app, Trump saying he believes the charges will come from the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and stem from alleged hush money payments that Trump made to adult film star Stormy Daniels during his first presidential campaign. ABC News has not verified the claims, but later a Trump spokesperson appearing to walk back the post, saying there's been no notification of charges from the DA, blasting the investigation as a witch hunt. Prominent Republicans rallying to Trump's defense. ABC's Jonathan Carl pressing former Vice President Pence in an exclusive interview for this week. He's calling on people to protest, to come out and protest, take our nation back. We know what happened the last time he said that. Well, John, the American people have a constitutional right to peaceably assemble. The frustration the American people feel about what they sense is a two-tier justice system in this country, I think, I think is well-founded. I believe that uh, people understand that if they give voice to this, if this occurs on Tuesday, that they need to do so peacefully and in a lawful manner. On the Democratic side, former Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeting, no one is above the law, not even a former president of the United States. The former president's announcement this morning is reckless. For months, a grand jury in New York has been ramping up its probe, examining if Trump's alleged $130,000 payment to Daniels violated campaign finance laws. But the case in New York just won in a series of investigations swirling around Trump, including in Georgia, where prosecutors are weighing whether to charge Trump or his allies over alleged attempts to overturn the 2020 election results in that state. And special counsel Jack Smith investigating the classified documents seized by the FBI from Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, as well as the January 6th insurrection and Trump's alleged attempts to hold on to power. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. Staying with morning headlines, U.S. soldiers conducting an air assault exercise earlier today. All of this part of ongoing joint drills with South Korea. So it happened just north of Seoul, about 20 miles from the heavily fortified border between South Korea and North Korea. The hel military helicopters transporting an M770 howitzer use an air assault train. Now, the exercise comes amid North Korea's missile provocations. North Korea fired a ballistic missile towards the sea just off the east coast of the Korean Peninsula earlier in the day. The missile flying about 500 miles before hitting the target. The company which makes Gerber's Good Start Infant Formula is voluntarily recalling its product. The company says it may be contaminated with bacteria. It says so far no products have shown any signs of bacteria contamination and no one has become sick, but they opted for the recall out of an abundance of caution. The formula being recalled was made between January 2nd and January 18th. You can see it right there on your screen. It was made of this. It was made this year during the January month. Customers with the product should toss it out and they can ask the company for a refund. Well, San Antonio is military city USA, and soon it could be looked at it as cybersecurity city USA. So we've seen momentous upgrades, and not only our cybersecurity career paths, but also our education systems across the Alamo City. One of those education institutions, UTSA, and that is why later this morning, 8 a.m., Max Kilger, director of data analytics program at UTSA, joining us live. What are we talking about a lot? Topics ranging from the risks of TikTok to what we plan to see in UTSA and around San Antonio over the next few years, what the new data center downtown means, not only for San Antonio, but also for future students in our area and future career opportunities. Again, that is later this morning at 8 a.m., so if you have any questions you'd like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of ksat.com. Time is just about 641, 43 degrees out. Huh? Still ahead on GMSA, <clears throat> excuse me, it's been a long time coming. District 7 residents have been patiently waiting to the doors of their library to reopen for two years. Up next, we take you inside the newly renovated Forest Hills Branch Library. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Yesterday, some of our neighbors seeing snow. Will we see any precipitation today? We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. 
Good morning. Welcome back. For two years, the community on the west side, they've actually had limited access to their library. That officially changed when the re with the reopening of the Forest Hills Branch Library this weekend. We completely reconfigured the space, make it more user friendly, make it more accessible. It looks more open. Uh, we created a new meeting room that's more flexible to allow for not only meetings, but for programming. Uh, so there's some new elements that we introduced as part of the renovation that will make the space much more user friendly and more attractive. All services and resources are now accessible at the library and it is operating under normal business hours. Love that the mariachis were there to oh, celebrate. Phenomenal. All right, so Sarah Spivey, is it going to be a good day to stay inside, maybe get a good read going? Yeah, but not as uh, difficult as it was yesterday. Yesterday we had rain pretty much throughout most of the day. Today we're not going to have any rain really. Okay. It's just going to be a cloudy and cool day. But I did promise to show some pictures of the snow yesterday across parts of Texas. This is in Carter Valley, which um, is right along Whoa. the yeah and Edwards and Valverde County line. And then this is another picture love out of there as well. I love the Texas flag. And then finally, Big Bend, Marfa, mm -hmm. Chisos Mountains. They got so much snow yesterday. This is wow. the Rios family. <laughs> Look at all of the snow they got out there at the Chisos Mountains. Sarah, I Bend. was there this time last year and it was 85 degrees. <laughs> yes, that's exactly right. So we can, this is Texas weather, man. I bet they weren't expecting that cold of air up in Big Bend. Very impressive. Again, today I don't anticipate any snow or any real significant rain for that matter. Although there are some areas getting some rain south of San Antonio. It's 43 degrees outside right now. 37 in Rock Springs, 39 in Kerrville. That's the cold spot on the map. 37 in Fredericksburg. Good morning in Uvalde. It's 42, 44. Five in New Braunfels, 44 in Gonzales, and 43 in San Antonio. Here's where that light rain is right now. It's going to stay south of San Antonio, but areas like Catula, even southern Atascosa County, getting some of that light rain. Uh, as we look at the t KSAT 12 hour forecast today, again, mainly just cloudy uh, during the day today. We're, we'll be in the 40s during this morning, 46 around 10, 50 at noon, and in the afternoon, after 3 p.m., there's the potential to see a few peaks of sunshine today. I hope we can get a little bit of sun. It's still going to be a cold one, though, or cool one, rather, with highs right near 56 this afternoon. Cooler out west and south where the clouds are going to stick around a bit. It's not every day that Laredo is cooler than San Antonio, but Laredo will be at 50 today. 51 in Del Rio, 57 in uh, Kerrville, 59 in Canyon Lake, 59 in Pleasanton, and 57 in Hondo. It's back to school tomorrow for many kids after a wacky spring break of mainly cool cool weather. Uh, dropping them off tomorrow, jackets are going to be needed. 40 degrees early tomorrow morning. I don't think we'll see any peaks of sun tomorrow, so it'll be cool and cloudy. 53. Rain is not really likely uh, tomorrow. And as we take a look at the weather setup across the nation, again, South Texas seeing a little bit of light rain. California once again seeing a lot of rainfall. They have uh, really come out of their drought with heavy rains. High pressure system is in place. That's what's keeping that uh, rain south of San Antonio and keeping dew points pretty dry. But as we look ahead to the week, that high is going to move off to the east. By Tuesday, it will be humid again. We're going to see humidity return on Tuesday and it'll be humid for most of the week. So when we look at rain chances, uh, we're expecting some drizzle starting on Tuesday morning. Drizzle will be possible on Wednesday, but then by Thursday night, a cold front is going to move through. It's not going to cool us down all that much but it is going to bring a window for some storms on Thursday night. We're going to be watching that carefully to see if any of them could become strong or severe, but right now we've got it about 40% coverage. Otherwise, what you need to know, keep the jackets handy for at least the next couple of days. By Tuesday, we'll be dealing with light rain drizzle in the morning, 66 for the high. Finally seeing the sun on Wednesday. It'll be humid and warm on Wednesday and Thursday with highs in the 80s. Then that front will be moving through Thursday night into Friday. This next weekend looks great, guys. We're going to have low humidity and sunny skies, temperatures in the 80s. So what a difference a week can make, right? Yes, I, I like these lower. T I, yeah, I don't mind the clouds and the lower temps. I mean, yeah. can we just stall before we get to like the extreme heat of the, of the summer or spring? 
We may even remember this this weekend as winter's last grasp because, again, it's going to keep be grasping. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Time now just about 650, 43 degrees. A surfer breaks the world record for longest surf session, then stays out for 10 more hours. Good we'll tell him. you why. That's next. Almost broke the record for world's longest beard, too. Taking a live <laughs> look out of the roadways. It is Sunday morning. Not too many people out and about. Maybe just a few doing some errands, headed to church, going out and about. But if you do have plans for today, Make sure to drive safely, be smart. If anything pops up, we'll keep you posted. All right, so it's what we've been talking about. An Aussie surfer not only breaking a world record, coasted right past it on a personal journey. As CNN's Jeremy Roth explains, he did it to bring awareness to mental health. Watch an Australian surfer break the world record for the longest surf session. Three, two, one. Surf coach Blakey Johnston went the distance in the water, hanging 10 on hundreds of waves to break the previous record of 30 hours and 11 minutes. Then, amazingly, Johnston stayed out on the waves for an additional 10 hours, pushing the new record to over 40 hours of straight surfing. The point break record breaking wasn't just for bragging rights, it was a personal journey for Johnston and his family. We're just so immensely proud of, of what he's done and, and what he's setting out to achieve. To um, like, This is all about honoring the legacy of our amazing dad who took his own life 10 years ago this year. Their foundation is raising funds to benefit youth mental health. Johnston received a hero's welcome from throngs of Seaside supporters and later posted to social media simply, I did it. There's something else gnarly catching waves in the ocean, but not necessarily in a good way. Scientists say a 5,000 mile wide massive mat of seaweed may be headed towards Florida shores and other Gulf of Mexico beaches. Researchers say the gargantuan glob of the species Sargassum could be the largest accumulation on record, so big it's visible from space. At sea, the funky floating flotsam provides a safe habitat for ocean life, but piled up on the beaches, it has the potential to put some serious seaweed stank on your summer seaside stay. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. All right, I want to go back to the surfer for a second. I think you raised like $400,000. Incredible. Can you imagine being out there for that long? His fingers are probably so pruned. I didn't even think about yeah. that part. I, I like how you turned to the negative. I too <laughs> want to learn how to serve. I want to give a shout out to Colin, who's our producer. He's actually in Hawaii right now, celebrating his birthday with his brother, uh, who's stationed there. And he's probably surfing. So Colin, good luck on your 40 hours of surfing. Good luck. Time now, 6.55, 43 degrees out. Here's what's next on Good Morning America. Good Sunday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on former President Trump's unverified claims. Sharing on social media, he'll be arrested this week. Former Vice President Pence now weighing in what we know and what's to come in the case prosecutors are pursuing against Trump. Also this morning, an American mother missing in Mexico believed to have been kidnapped. What her family is saying about her disappearance and the reward the FBI is now offering for information. And finally, what's ahead for March Madness as the tournament takes new turns with half of the Sweet 16 set, the winning moments from the court, and the new teams taking the lead. That's all ahead here on TMA. We'll see you then. To take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, nine, zero, two, fireball three, daily four, two, two, nine, six, fireball three. All right, your cash five, nine, 13, 21, 27, 32, lotto Texas. 19, 24, 40, 42, 44, 51. Here we go. Power by the it's at 82 million. 14, 20, 30, 54, 69. Powerball 11. Power play two. Good luck. Cool and cloudy today with highs only in the 50s. We'll see drizzle and light rain return on Tuesday. It'll still be cloudy, though, with a high of 66. Wednesday and Thursday, we are back to the warmth and humidity. Morning drizzle each day. Each day, highs in the 80s. We'll see some storms on Thursday night into Friday. That front not doing much to cool us down, but it will sweep away the humidity and make for a really nice weekend next weekend. Love to see that. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America, but don't go anywhere. We'll be back here at 8 a.m. See you guys at 8.
Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And we are starting off with a live look out of the Alamo City. 43 degrees. We know some of you watching may have had snow yesterday. A lot of precipitation around our community. What is the rest of the day going to look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is March 19th. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So yesterday, did you get enough rain in the garden? Oh, my garden is popping. Popping. It is popping okay. off right now. The flowers look fantastic. Nice. Sarah Spivey, I love that you called it the fridge at the floor shop. Yeah, this is the fridge at the floor shop, right? We're not seeing a freeze. We're not damaging any kind of plants. It's just giving a little bit of water. And also, uh, you know what? Uh, keeping things a little bit cooler out there. Today, we will not be seeing rain like we did yesterday in a big way. In fact, maybe just a sprinkle or two, but it is going to stay cool and cloudy. Take a look outside right now with live cam. Cloudy start to the day. Temperatures in the 40s, 43 degrees at the airport. Those winds, which are from the northwest right now will slowly be turning to the south today. It's cold up in Kerrville where it's 38 degrees, 37 in Rock Springs, 42 in Hondo. If you're bundling up around San Antonio, uh, just know that there is some rain to the south. You can see some light rain for Catula, Beeville. This is going to stay south of San Antonio today. We'll really only be looking at a small 10% chance for a stray shower through noon. Otherwise, we'll be in the 50s, so a little bit warmer than yesterday, but still on the cool side. I think we will see a few peaks the sunshine this afternoon for the first time in a while and then a cold evening ahead. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about how we'll finally start to warm up by Wednesday. We'll be back into the 80s. But in addition to this, there's also a few chances for uh, showers and storms in the mix and officially the last day of, of winter today because the uh, spring equinox is tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit about what we can potentially expect this spring around San Antonio. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Starting this morning with an update to a story we first told you about yesterday. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office is still working to determine the identity of a 12-year-old girl who was shot and killed during a house party on the west side. So San Antonio police telling us they responded to this scene just after 2.30 a.m. early yesterday morning. This home on South Callahan Road near Old Highway 90 and Highway 151. When investigators got there, they found the 12-year-old and they also found a 15-year-old with gunshot wounds. Police say the party had both teens and adults. No suspect has been found at the scene. No one is in custody. As for the 15 year old who was also shot, they're still in the hospital. San Antonio Pol police and Crime Stoppers are hoping this photo on your screen of a suspected kidnapper's vehicle will lead to their arrest. The attempted kidnapping happened Friday in the 5800 block of Wales Avenue. That's near Pecan Valley Drive in East South Cross. Police say the suspect, who is believed to be between the ages of 17 and 21, tried to force a 27-year-old woman into the back seat of this maroon Nissan Murano. The woman was able to fight back and able to get to a neighbor for help. Anyone with information on this attempted kidnapping or the suspect asked to call the number on your screen. That is for Crime Stoppers 210-224-STOP. Well, we've seen momentous upgrades in our cybersecurity career paths and our cybersecurity education systems across the Alamo City. And in case you haven't noticed, cybersecurity is all around us. Absolutely. That's why joining us in today's leading essay segment is Professor Max Kilger, Director of Data Analytics Programs at UTSA. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So, Professor, there's been a lot of talk regarding TikTok and the threat it poses. Can you explain it in simple terms, the risk of having the app on American phones? Sure, I'd be glad to. So there are a number of sort of significant threats from the app. The first, of course, is gathering information. So when you sign up, you, you give them a username, an age, a phone number, an email. And then the app on top of that begins to collect things about like what you've been watching, search history, uh, message content on TikTok and, and things like that. And so uh, they're basically uh, gathering information that could be shared with the Chinese government. And um, this could be a huge counterintelligence uh, bonanza for Chinese state security services. They could be collecting personal information on people who have sensitive jobs in the defense industry or in the military or government. 
And uh, traditionally, they've also been very patient in terms of uh, collecting data about, say, students, for example, because students eventually graduate, say, in cybersecurity, and then they get a sensitive job in the government, and they'll use that information to approach them. Uh, there's a 2017 law, uh, Chinese law that was enacted that basically requires every Chinese company to support Chinese national security efforts. So that's the first threat. The second threat really is sort of that TikTok can and does censor uh, the information that you see. So for example, you won't see a lot of negative news about China in terms of say Taiwan's relationship or how the, the Uyghur population has been treated. Uh, and also the third issue is that um, TikTok controls the algorithm that controls exactly what you see. Now, Facebook does it similarly, it has an algorithm, but Facebook's not owned by a Chinese company that also has ties to the Chinese government. And sort of uh, finally, uh, you have to think about how TikTok might shape information. So say, for example, the upcoming 2024 election and how TikTok might uh, basically uh, micro-target people by looking at the information that they've gathered and then micro-targeting messages that might influence uh, how they vote in the 2024 presidential election. So sticking with cybersecurity risks, there was recently a ransomware attack on the U.S. Marshals. So what happened and how can institutions around the country protect themselves from these kind of attacks? Yeah, on, on February 17th, the U.S. Marshals Office noticed that there was data being exfiltrated from one of their systems. And it was what it looks like is a pretty typical ransomware attack where uh, there, there are sort of two phases to it. The first phase is the cyber criminals exfiltrate and gather um, valuable information from the systems that they've compromised. And then, of course, they turn on the ransomware second phase, which encrypts the files uh, where they can then sort of demand a payment. Now, U.S. Marshal's office has said basically that it mostly administrative data, uh, some information about investigations and things like that. They've denied that uh, anything like witness protection information has been uh, collected. But about three days ago, an unknown actor emerged on the dark web claiming to have 360 gigabytes of uh, exfiltrated U.S. Marshall data and fairly uh, sensitive data. Uh, but it's it's unclear. They're trying to sell it for one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. It's under unclear whether this is a real offer or whether it's just a cyber criminal basically um, trying to cash in on this ransomware attack, but doesn't really have the data. And so to answer your second question, how do organizations protect themselves? You need to put more effort and more funding into all components of information security, including not just the technical components, uh, but also uh, things like formal education in terms of information security policy and procedures for employees. And that's, that's a good thing because data is basically the most valuable asset of many companies. And so, but for example, only about 14% of a financial institute's uh, budget is sent to cybersecurity, and only half of that for, for healthcare. Um, and backup, I guess ransomware backups are really important. You got to get the data back. If they encrypt it and you have backups, you're okay. My good friend who runs an information cybersecurity conference in Canada says basically if your data is not backed up in three different physical locations, you should consider it already gone. And so Professor Kilger, one last question for you. We only have about a minute or so. Obviously UTSA making huge leaps when it comes to cybersecurity. What does the new data center downtown mean, not only for the city, but also for students and possible career opportunities? I have to say, I have a new office down there at San Pedro One. It is an amazing building full of 
all sorts of research labs, and they've taken some of the world-class uh, scholars from UTSA and ensconced them in that building. Uh, fabulous teaching facilities for students, uh, emphasizing cybersecurity, uh, data science, data analytics, and all sorts of different disciplines. And also it's the new home of the uh, UTSA's National Security Collaboration Center, which where academia, industry, and government uh, come together to help protect our national security. It's a really amazing place and they're working really hard to integrate San Pedro One into the San Antonio community. So it's really fabulous to see that happen. Professor Kilger, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And for our viewers, you can catch this whole interview later on KSAT.com. Time now, just about 8-11, 43 degrees out. 43 degrees out. Oof, middle of March, it feels like where, what? Where December? are you going, Max? Oh, oh there you go. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving you by your lonesome. It's too cold out here. <laughs> Hey, Sarah Spivey is going to have our Sunday forecast when we come back. All right, but first we're going to be talking about Military Appreciation Night for our Brahmas. They are back here at home after a two-game losing streak. We're going to talk about Military Appreciation Night at the Dome and what it means for one of our players. Good morning, everyone. The first day of spring is tomorrow, and we're all looking forward to the warm weather. But why does spring start on March 20th, and what can we expect for spring in our general area? We'll have all those answers coming up. Good morning, and welcome back. So spring officially begins tomorrow, March 20th. Good news for farmers, gardeners, and everyone looking forward to some sunshine. But why March 20th? And what does our spring outlook look like going forward? Alyssa Cole joining us now from the Japanese Tea Garden. Good morning, Alyssa. Yes, good morning, Sarah and Max. I'm here at the Japanese Tea Garden because flowers, greenery, vegetation, these are all the different things we think of when we think of springtime. And, you know, we all know that old saying, April showers bring May flowers. But hey, you know, I've had a question. I'm pretty sure some of you may be wondering the same. Why does spring start on March 20th? Well, Research shows us that the vernal equinox is also known as the spring equinox, and it represents when the sun's angle reaches different points on the Earth. Now, during this time, the sun rays are directly over the equator, and this phenomenon, uh, the equator, is roughly when all parts of the world receive equal sunlight. It's really cool, and it's 12 hours on the first day of spring, which is March 20th. Now, the understanding is it's going to warm up, and it's all good from here as far as enjoying those warm temperatures, but to break down all that wonderful, exciting scientific information, we have our top weather authority meteorologist, Sarah Spivey. Sarah, thank you for joining us. Let's get into talking about the spring outlook for our San Antonio area, the temperatures. What can you tell us? Yeah, well, Alyssa, first I'd like to start with the fact that we have been in La Nina for three winters in a row. We're finally out of La Nina, Alyssa, and we're heading into a neutral period between La Nina and El Nino. El Nino typically brings us a wetter fall, wetter winter, which we're looking forward to because we need some rain. But as far as the outlook for temperatures go, we are expected to be above average for the months of uh, April, May, and June. As we get into San Antonio, that does include San Antonio. Now you may be asking what is above average, what is average in general? Well, April, the average high is 80. May, the average high is 87. In June, the average high is 92. So we're gradually expected to uh, just be a little bit warmer on average than those temperatures. Uh, so yeah, maybe not the best news for those of us who like the cool, but it is cool today as well. Alyssa. Okay, perfect. And I, I, I'll be before weather, I guess. Or you it, well, yeah. And what the thing is, Alyssa, is that we're going to be actually a little bit uh, drier than seasonally average, potentially. So we've got exceptional drought out there right now, which, as you know, is not great news for us. The exceptional drought. As far as the spring outlook for rainfall, 
it's looking to be normal, uh, close to the average. And this is what we usually see on average for April, about two and a half inches of rain, a little bit more than four for May. May is actually our rainiest month. And then by June, we will be looking at about three inches of rain on average, on average. But we're going to need a lot more rain than that to get rid of the drought. So we'll continue to keep you posted. Even if this spring is drier than average, remember, El Nino is expected to start a little bit later in the year, and that typically leads to a wetter fall and a wetter winter. I'm hopeful we can get out of the drought situation by this time next year. But today, it's actually going to be a lot colder than average. It's 43 degrees outside right now, 38 in Kerrville, 37 in Rock Springs, 44 in Del Rio, 44 in New Braunfels. As we look a little bit closer to San Antonio this morning, wake up temperature in Bernie is 37. I hope you're bundling up. It's it's cloudy out there. One good thing is we do anticipate uh, a little bit of rain south of San Antonio toward Catula and Beeville, but around San Antonio itself, we are expected to stay dry during the day today. Here's a look at the radar and you can see all of that rain expected to stay south of San Antonio. When we look at the future cast, there's only a 10% chance through about noon for a sprinkle or two. Then right around the lunch hour, we're going to be looking at the potential for a few peaks of sunshine. This would be the first time we see sun in a while in San Antonio. It would be nice to see a little bit of sun. Here's what that's going to mean for temperatures. As we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, temperatures in the 40s this morning going to be cool right around 51 degrees at noon. And then as we head into the afternoon, that's when hopefully we could see a little bit of sun 56 degrees for the high. Elsewhere, we'll be looking a little cooler east of San Antonio, west of San Antonio, rather, toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, and Laredo because clouds are going to stick around a bit longer out there. Highs will only be near 50. Neighborhoods around San Antonio, though, 56 in Lotus, 59 in Rio Medina, 59 in Floresville, and 59 in Seguin. Kids are heading back to school tomorrow, and the clouds are actually going to stick around through the day tomorrow, too. So make sure your kids have a jacket as they head to the bus stop. It's going to be a cloudy day with only some drizzle developing in the latter part of the day. Closer to the evening, we're expecting some drizzle. This is going to be the sign that the humidity is actually on the rise. We're going to be getting a warm front Monday night into Tuesday. So Tuesday through Thursday, it's going to be pretty warm. And when we look at the dew points, that's what I'm showing you here, the dew points in the 60s. That's noticeably muggy. So Tuesday through Thursday, there's going to be morning fog and drizzle just about every single day before we see a, a cold front move through Thursday night. That's going to drop the humidity. So again, what I was showing you there were the dew point temperatures. The actual temperatures are going to be a lot warmer than that. Take a look at Wednesday through Friday. We'll be in the 80s and there is the potential for some storms Thursday night into Friday. So we've just got a couple more days of the cooler weather. And as Alyssa was talking, about spring officially starts tomorrow, but we won't really feel spring like until Wednesday. Hey, Sarah and Max, I'll be back in a bit to talk about the potential for some storms Thursday night into Friday, what that means for our weather. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's it's interesting to know that we're expected to be a little bit warmer than average for our spring. And as far as the rain goes, hopefully close to average, we could use that good month of May to fill up those rain gauges. But uh, we'll, of course, let you know. And as is typical around this time with around this area, our droughts typically end in floods. So with that in mind, make sure you have the Case Hot Weather Authority app handy because we'll be with you all throughout spring and the rest of the year. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 821, 43 degrees out. Still ahead, rapper and entrepreneur Snoop Dogg adding another project to his business empire inspired by his recent trip to Indonesia. We will tell you what he's brewing. That's next. And still ahead, how about them Brahmas? They're back here at home playing tonight. And guess what? It is Military Appreciation Night. One of our players, a grad and alum from Navy. We're going to talk about how important tonight is to him. Still your starting quarterback? Uh, no. We will go with uh, Reed. Uh, and to start the game off, both quarterbacks will play. So there you have it. Reed getting his chance to lead the Brahma's offense under center tonight in Big Board Sports.
As you just heard from him, head coach Heinz Ward led the Brahmas back to the Dome this weekend for the first time in nearly a month. The last time they took the field was in mid-February for their season opener. That's when they took on St. Louis Battlehawks. They lost that game 18-15, and now the team returns to San Antonio on the wrong end of a two-game losing streak. And in that losing streak, they've scored a total of 19 points. In four games this season, quarterback Jack Cohn completing 58% of his passes, about 625 yards, five touchdowns, two interceptions. So now it's time to see what Reed can do under center for a team that's still trying to figure out how to get in the end zone. We'll make some changes. Uh, hopefully they're for the better. And I think, you know, offensively and uh, defensively and our special teams have been playing well. We just have to match everyone else offensively and hopefully we can turn uh, um, some playmaking abilities from our players and the scheme that we're running uh, and translate that into W's. So after the walkthroughs yesterday, the Brahmas signed autographs on hats, footballs and cards for wounded warriors, all part of Military Appreciation Night. San Antonio defensive back Sean Williams, he's a Navy alum, so obviously tonight has a special place in his heart. It really means everything. Um, I hope everyone that we have here really can grasp in the moment, you know, those times where we try to celebrate those people that go out on the front lines and really hold it down for our country and also the people supporting those people in the background, you know, and the sacrifices that they have to make in order to, you know, enjoy days like this and games like this. So what comes next? The Brahmas taking on the Arlington Renegades tonight. Remember, kickoff has been moved up to 8 p.m. Go Brahmas. Go Brahmas. Time now, 828, 43 degrees out. Well, hundreds gathered to remember the beloved Uvalde teacher still ahead, how organizers hope to keep her memory alive in years to come. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Sunday, I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. Hey, tomorrow hey. is the official start of spring. Yeah, even though it doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like that, Sarah. And I know we're in meteorological spring already, correct? Yeah, the Look meteorological me. spring is, is the months of March, <laughs> Great teamwork April, out here. in May. And then um, astronomical spring starts tomorrow with the vernal equinox, which doesn't end until the summer solstice in June. So. Yeah, that's a lot of technical things, but really, honestly, it's just cold outside. It doesn't feel like spring whatsoever. Take a look up there. It's 43 degrees in San Antonio, 37 in Bernie, 38 in Bandera, 38 in Kerrville. You know, I expect clouds for most of the day today, but we will see some peaks of sunshine into the afternoon. We'll only be at 51 degrees around lunch and for the high 56. Again, a few peaks of sunshine this afternoon, and it'll be a mile, a cooler evening with temperatures falling into the low 50s, upper 40s by midnight. Here's what we got to talk about in the forecast, your weekly weather timeline. Today and tomorrow, mainly dry. Rain doesn't look good today or tomorrow, but it will be cool and cloudy. In the middle of the week, however, it'll be coming come humid and we will have some daily drizzle in the forecast until about Friday. Then late week we do have a chance for storms on Thursday night. A lot to cover in the forecast. I'll walk you through it in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a family trying to figure out what comes next after their home went down in flames overnight. So this is what we know right now. Take a look. According to firefighters on the scene, this happened just after 11 last night. Two people were inside the house at the time of the fire. They managed to make it out safely. Now, the house next door had melted siding overall, though not affected by these flames. Right now, fire investigators, they were on the scene. They're still trying to figure out how this all happened. San Antonio firefighters also working to put out another house fire on the southeast side. SAFD says it happened on Caton near New Braunfels and I-10 after 11 last night. That fire took over the whole front of the home. Fire crews were able to contain the fire and eventually put it out. There were no injuries and the home is a total loss. Speaking of fires, the Bulverde Spring Branch community, they're working together trying to help the families of two businesses that were forced to close because of a fire. Mm -hmm. So this all happened yesterday morning at the Markery in Old Village, downtown Bloverde. Now, fire officials would not comment on the investigation into the fire, but Rhonda Zunker with the Bulverde Spring Branch Chamber of Commerce, she is collecting donations to help the more than a dozen people who work at the art studio and the bistro, which also had damage. We've even had a restaurant owner reach out to offer employing some of the other 
uh, some of the staff members here until Verde can get back up and running and in business again. Francesca Watson, owner of the makery, says she also lost a cat in this fire. She also estimates that there was more than $100,000 worth of specialty equipment in the studio. Well, a teen being questioned by police for causing a scene at a Dollar Tree ended up being arrested and confessing to murder. Let's take a look. 19-year-old Sebastian Segovia charged with capital murder. Now, Segovia was taken into custody at the Dollar Tree on Fredericksburg Road. During the line of questioning, he told police he wanted to talk about a homicide, wanted to speak with a homicide detective about a murder he committed just last month. Now, he confessed to stabbing a man in the neck three times at an apartment complex on Fredericksburg. That victim later identified as 37-year-old Robert Hurley. Segovia's bond now set at $750,000. Well, the day after what would have been her 45th birthday, hundreds gathered in Uvalde yesterday for Eva Mirelis' memorial run. The run comes a day after what would have been her 45th birthday. Her husband and daughter say they were both incredibly touched by the hundreds of people who signed up to participate and showed up in the rain. You can see there in the cold, some even participating virtually. All that money raised will go towards a scholarship in her, in her name. Thinking of going towards uh, education and an uh, athletic scholarship. So we're still trying to decide what to do with that. But all of this money is going towards a scholarship. They hope to have this race happen every year. On top of the scholarship, Eva's family will be raising money to buy school supplies and toys for children. In your morning headlines, at a social media post, former President Donald Trump says he expects to be arrested on Tuesday, and he's also urging his supporters to protest. As ABC's Rena Roy reports, Trump says the charges will come from Manhattan District Attorney's Office over alleged hush money payments. Former President Trump taking to his social media app Saturday, claiming he will be arrested on Tuesday in relation to the Manhattan DA's investigation into alleged hush money payments made to porn star Stormy Daniels ahead of the 2016 election. ABC News has not verified the claims and the Manhattan DA providing no comment. Trump also calling on his supporters to protest. Former Trump administration official John Bolton saying the call has echoes of January 6th. If he's calling people into the streets, this time he's seen the experience of January the 6th, and I think this is potentially very dangerous. Shortly after his post, a Trump spokesperson in his statement saying in part that there is no notification from the DA on the arrest and insisting the former former president is rightfully highlighting his innocence and the weaponization of our injustice system. This after a pivotal week in the criminal investigation, Daniels meeting with Manhattan prosecutors and former Trump attorney Michael Cohen testifying for about five hours in front of a grand jury about that alleged hush money payment. I was working for a man who ultimately became president of the United States. And yes, there were things that we did that were wrong. For example, the hush money payment. Though questions now about whether prosecutors should pursue this case against the former president. If you look at it from the big picture, you've got a tricky legal case in conjunction with one that could arguably help him politically. Pence has called for any protest to be peaceful. Meanwhile, Trump has said he has no plans to drop out of the presidential race, even if he's indicted. A spokesperson saying that he will be in Texas next weekend for a rally. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. A strong earthquake that shook southern Ecuador and northern Peru has killed at least 15 people and left others trapped under the rubble. Saturday's earthquake with about 6.8 magnitude also brought down homes and buildings. But in Ecuador, regardless of geography, many of those homes had a lot in common. They housed the poor and were old buildings and did not meet building standards in the earthquake-prone country. The government has offered to pay for the funerals of at least three people. Well, South Korea's military says North Korea conducted another missile launch today, this time a short-range ballistic missile. Japan's defense ministry says it reached an altitude of about 31 miles, flew nearly 500 miles before landing on the sea between Japan and the Korean Peninsula. The tests coincide with the ongoing military exercises held by the United States and South Korea.
All right, now to a recall alert to tell you about. A company that makes Gerber's Good Start Instant Formula is voluntarily recalling its product. The company says it may be contaminated with bacteria. So far, though, no products have shown any signs of bacteria contamination, and no one has reportedly become sick. The recall is out of an abundance of caution. The formula being recalled was made between January 2nd and January 18th of this year, 2023. Customers with the product should toss it out, and they can ask the company for a refund. Farmers and gardeners may be looking forward to some sunshine, especially March 20th. All right, GMSA's Alyssa Cole live at the Japanese Tea Garden. Alyssa, good morning. Good morning, Max. Sarah, we are all looking forward to the first day of spring tomorrow. I'm here at the Japanese Tea Garden where I'm surrounded by, of course, those beautiful flowers, greenery, vegetation. This is what we think of during this time of year. But of course, some of us wonder why March 20th? Why is this the marker day for the first day of spring? We're going to show you some really cool video. We're going to show you a slideshow of video right now on your screen of beautiful spring pictures all around the nation and all around the world. But research shows us the vernal equinox, also known as the spring equinox, represents when the sun's angle reaches different points on the earth. Now, during this time, the very, of course, warm sun rays are all over the earth and they're directly over the equator. And this equinox is roughly when all the parts of the world are receiving equal sunlight. It's a very cool phenomenon. That's about 12 hours of sunlight on the first day of spring. And the understanding is the temperatures increase and it goes all up from here. But we do have Sarah the later in the newscast. She's going to break down how it all works and she's going to go into the detail of what we can expect for spring here in our San Antonio area. But for now, reporting in downtown San Antonio, Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Time now, 41, 43 degrees out. 43 degrees. Ooh, it, it is chilly out yeah, there. It's not warm. <laughs> What's your like line of demarcation? I'll say under 50, I'm just calling it cold. Under 65? Oh. We're talking to a South Texas girl. <laughs> Sarah Spivey will have a forecast when we come back. Welcome back. HEB is helping customers find local handyman lawn care and personalized pet services and a new partnership with Thumbtack. So more than 300 HEB stores across Texas now have displays where customers can scan a QR code and find access to local services while they shop. I love that. This is possible with help through local businesses that aren't up with Thumbtack to help out shoppers, daily needs, from pet sitting and grooming to house cleaners, shoppers can get a 10% discount when booking through HEB QR codes. All right, are you guys ready to fiesta? Because Battle of Flowers, one of the most famous flower parades across the country, is returning to San Antonio this April. Fiesta officials releasing the parade route info. If you plan on attending, you can now plan your visit. The map route shows that the parade kicking off near San Antonio College, ending near Santa Rosa and West Martin Street. Battle of Flowers Parade, the oldest event and largest parade of Fiesta San Antonio, and it is the only parade in the United States produced entirely by women. I didn't know that one. Yes. You can view the whole route right now on KSAT.com, and I got to say, if you're planning to do anything Fiesta related, we got you covered. Go to KSAT.com. We have so many events planned. Are you guys ready? And, and you can actually be a Fiesta insider and purchase mm -hmm. tickets hey. on KSAT.com right now to watch the Battle of Flowers Parade. Yeah. And I will in be person. there in person. I will be there along Fantastic. with several other KSAT news um, folks. folks. People. People. Yeah. Friends. We're, we're, there's going to be a lot of us there. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I hope that the parade routes and the day of the parade can be a lot warmer than today. Oh, it should be. Okay, it, it really, I would be surprised if it was uh, as cool as today. But as Alyssa was talking about before the break, you know, the spring equinox does start tomorrow. Here's a little look at what that looks like from space. So it's about uh, on the equinox tomorrow at 424 when the sun is going to be directly over the equator. And it's it's at the time when we're starting to tilt back toward the sun. Uh, so equinox means Latin for equal nights. <laughs> so that's pretty neat too. So we'll, that happens officially at a 424 tomorrow, but it's not gonna feel like spring tomorrow. It's gonna be a cold day tomorrow too, just like today. 43 degrees outside right now. It's 39 in Kerrville though, 37 in Rock Springs, 42 in Honda 
window 45 in Pleasanton. As we look at the radar, there are some light rain showers south of San Antonio in Atascosa County, Maverick County, but these are going to continue to move south and there's some light rain activity near Corpus Christi as well. So I do not anticipate rain today like what we saw yesterday. In fact, I'm only giving it a 10% chance for a sprinkle or two through about noon. It's at noon that we'll start to see some peaks of sun and temperatures will be warming into the mid uh, to upper 50s. 56 for the high in San Antonio. Still a lot colder than average. Here's a look at the forecast highs today. Cooler out west where it'll stay a little cloudier. 51 Del Rio, 51 in Eagle Pass, but it'll be 57 in Kerrville, 59 in Canyon Lake, and 59 in Pleasanton. A lot of kids heading back to school tomorrow as spring break comes to an end. Make sure they have the jackets with them because it's going to be cold to start the day near 40 degrees and then in the afternoon 53 for the high cool and cloudy tomorrow again no real significant rain chances until some drizzle tomorrow night and we'll talk about that in a bit but first I wanted to show you the weather setup across the nation once again California getting rain after rainfall event they have had very bad dry season and so it's good for them to see some rain but it's a little bit too much of a good thing right now meanwhile high pressure system in place overhead that's continuing to push that rain south of San Antonio. It's also making it pretty dry at the surface. You need a lot of chapstick and hand lotion. It's very dry with low humidity. But as that high moves off to the east, our winds are going to turn around to the south and to the east, and we're going to see humidity increase. So that by tomorrow, it's going to be, uh, pardon me, by Mon Tuesday, rather, it's going to be noticeably humid. In fact, that'll translate to drizzle Tuesday through Thursday. About uh, 20% coverage, but still drizzle is going to be a factor for us Tuesday through Thursday. Then Thursday night, we have the potential for a few stronger thunderstorms as well. I want to put that on your radar as you're planning your week. So just to go over your seven day forecast again today, cool and cloudy 56, a little bit cooler tomorrow. Uh, 53 for the high and then by Tuesday we're going to have areas of light rain out there Tuesday, especially in the morning. So a bit of a messy commute on Tuesday morning as you're planning your week 66 for the high. Then as we look ahead to the latter half of the week, it's going to be humid and warm. We're going to be back into the 80s on Wednesday, 82 on Thursday. Those uh, about 40% coverage of storms on Thursday night into Friday. Even though technically a front is going to move through Tuesday night, Thursday night into Friday, it is going to end up being a very nice weekend, a little bit on the warm side with highs in the 80s, but low humidity. So last weekend, guys, we were at 92. Mm -hmm. mm. This weekend, we saw snow in the hill country, and the next weekend is going to be in the middle of that. A really comfortable, pleasant weekend. Welcome to spring in South Texas. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 851, 43 degrees. Let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick 3, 9, zero, 2, Fireball 3, Daily 4, 2, 2, 9, 6, Fireball 3. And your cash 5, 9, 13, 21, 27, 32. Lotto Texas, 19, 24, 40, 42, 44, 51. Here we go. Powerball, I think it's now up to like 82 million, so not at your line of... Yeah, it needs to be over 100 million uh, if I'm going to be playing. Yeah, because <laughs> God forbid anyone le wins less than 100 million. If you did play, here are your numbers. 14, 20, 30, 54, 69, Powerball 11, Power Play 2. Good luck. We'll be right back. All right, just a quick recap of what's going on out there right now. Sacked into cloud cover. It is 44 degrees. Hope you got that winter jacket out. Uh, it is going to warm up a little bit today, especially because we'll see peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. 56 winds will turn to the southeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Another cool, cloudy day tomorrow, but I wonder if this is the last time we're going to see highs in the 50s for a while. As we officially start spring tomorrow afternoon, it looks like we'll have a warm up morning drizzle Tuesday. Clouds will clear out of here by Thursday and it'll be warm. Highs in the 80s. Chance for storms on Thursday. I want to tell you right now, it's that time of year, spring, where some of those storms can become strong. So we will keep you posted as the forecast evolves. Do you have a quick question? We got about 30 seconds left. Did we get enough rain? I know we've been dealing with drought. No, we didn't get enough rain. Now, it's never Del enough. <laughs> yeah, Del Rio got about an inch of rain. We uh -huh. here got about eh, about four tenths. So. Okay. Not, we'll take it. Thank All you, right. Sarah. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Happy Sunday. Hey, go Brahmas.